You're watching an amazing podcast from an amazing podcast company. What's up, Mob Associates? Jimmy Naples here, Johnny Ciccatelli. Hey, we had a great show at the Robbins Theater. Man, that place was jam-packed, all those people there. I mean, you know, intermission, I went up to try to say hi to some people. I couldn't even get to the top, man. No, it was uh, it was like 1,400 seats or close to it, packed, sold out. Um, it was, yeah, there was points where I went to get a drink, and uh, and it was just, you, you know, you couldn't make it through the line. There was a line to get books. There was a line to get our merchandise and stuff. You couldn't even make it through to the lobby, which was kind of kind of cool. But uh, it was hot. It was a warm day, warm day, uh, sixty something degrees, great weather. And uh, thank you everybody for coming out. That was amazing. We really had a great time. And you know, to sell out something that big on our first show, uh, our first big live show, just felt amazing. So thank you. You know, heartfelt thank you to everybody who came out and supported us. Um, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna grow, and we're gonna get. Do more of these shows. We got a lot of stuff coming. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it it was like I said. It was just man. It was just great to see everybody there, and the crowd was you know really responsive and uh, yeah. You know, uh, lot, you know we'll we'll have the video up. Uh, you know, maybe in a few weeks we'll put some clips up and things that you might have missed. But uh, you know, you'll hear a lot of laughter, a lot of uh, you know people people kind of reacting in the crowd to certain things. So it was really cool. Yeah, we had uh, of course we had Rick Perello on there. Uh, yes. You know, he came and talked about you know the kind of the rise and fall of Cleveland there. Yeah. Uh, we touched on Danny Green, and we touched with the Youngstown connection with uh, Ronnie Carabia and, and Warren. We talked a lot, a lot about Warren there, about how, you know, those guys, Jack Licavoli was the boss of the Cleveland family, and Danny Green was this upstart uh, Irishman, this longshoreman who got linked up with John Nardi in the rackets. Yeah. And when John Scalish, the boss of the Cleveland crime family, died, uh, Danny Green... And John Nardi made a move to take over. Yeah. Uh, Jack Licavoli was named the boss, but he didn't have the support of Nardi and Green and some of these other guys. So they actually had like a revolt. They tried to 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 you know take over and get rid of uh, Licavoli and the top mobsters. And they were successful in a, in a part. They got rid of Leo Lips Maseri. Yeah. You know they bombed uh, the animal. You know and he sent him down to Florida. Yeah. So it was kind of like a big war that was starting there. And Cleveland had their hands full. And they had to call in for outside help. Yeah. And, you know, they had the, uh, the Carabias and, and Struthers um, were considered in the Cleveland family, the Cleveland Absolutely. faction. And uh, Ronnie Carabia was one of the men used. Ray Ferrito was another guy used. We talked a lot with Rick about this Warren connection, though, because we were in Warren for the, for the show at the Robbins. Right. And Rick explained, you know, how... Ray Ferrito moved to Warren at one time. Yeah. Licavoli lived there for a long time, had family there. Well, Licavoli, you know, before he became boss, he was kind of running kind of Warren. Yeah. You know, for, the, when, for, for Cleveland. And when, so. he, when he made the full move to Cleveland, um, Tony Dope Del Sanner was like his lieutenant. Yeah. He was a made man in the Cleveland family. He became the consul yeti to, to Licavoli. Right. And, but he was running Trumbull County for Licavoli and then for Warren, yeah. I watched uh, I watched the movie yesterday. Kill the Irishman. Guys, check it out. It's on HBO now. It's on HBO Max. It's you know probably streaming out there on other channels as well. Check that out, guys. It's a what you know. It's Absolutely. a fun. It's a fun movie. Christopher Walken, Vince Vincent D'Onofrio, Val Kilmer, yeah. Ray Stevenson. I love it. I love it. He kept Ray Stevenson, who plays Danny Green. He comes in and he goes, "You know why you guys call yourself Peanuts and Jack White and Ronnie the Crab?" He's like, "Cause you assholes can't remember your own name." Uh, that was a funny line, but you know what? He got he definitely got uh, what was coming to him for that line because oh yeah, they got him in the end. Spoiler <laughs> yeah. alert! If you don't know, uh, you know Danny Green got a Youngstown tune-up up in Lyndhurst. But Rick Perello was um, a, a great author, true crime pioneer. Um, his family also had uh, long, you know, a mob history in Cleveland. They were they were amongst the the first bosses of Cleveland, the Perellos and the Leonardos. Yeah. There was a war that went on, and his, his grandfather and his great-uncles were all killed. And, you know, we talked a little bit about that, how you guys shared a little family, you know, link in that same regard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, of course, with the Naples brothers, uh, Sandy, Billy, and Joey, um, you know, and, and I, I talked to a few people there about that, and they all kind of echoed the same sentiment. You know, my grandfather passed away. It was roughly about six months after uh, Joey got killed. And you know, for, for for a guy to be almost 80 years old and 
have to witness, you know, three of his brothers get killed. I'm sure he probably ended up dying of a broken heart, yeah. most likely, yeah. you know. Absolutely. I mean, that had to be tough to see, you know. Absolutely. So, but, uh, like, you know, it was great, man. You, you guys, though, real quick, you guys, you and Rick, have been able to turn, you know, turn your family history into something that you've explored. Right. And have been able to, you know, really find the historical value in the research that you guys have done. Absolutely. You know, uh, grief is tough, right? Um, you know, I, unfortunately, I've lost a, a child and things like that. So, you know, I, I kind of know what that kind of grief feels like. So I wanted to make it something positive, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, we need to celebrate our history. It's what makes this area so unique. It's what makes it special. Yeah. Um, and so with that, you know, with what we do, you know, we keep that history around. And we make sure that people understand why Youngstown is the way it is, why it still continues to be the way it is, right? Yeah. Um, and so by us doing that, that gives me a kind of an outlet to take that grief and turn it into something positive that I can share with everybody. Well, we're glad you do, man. And I'm, I'm glad you, you, you do it with me. Um, I'm, I'm happy to help you, and we're just going to grow. So. Dude, I, this, is, this is like it's like one of those adventures where, you know, the next, next thing that comes around the corner just gets bigger and better and better. Man, I, I couldn't have picked a better partner to work Thank with. you, man. Uh, you know, we, we have a blast doing this. We do. Um, you know, and our wives talked the other day, and they're, they're starting to get a great connection now. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's like I said, it's just been – it's a blessing for me. Yeah. Well, know? if you missed the show, guys, uh, there's a great article out there from the Youngstown Business Journal. They did a review. Uh, Guy Destolfo, he's a reporter there. He did, a, he did an excellent rundown of what was in the show – what you might have missed. Again, we talked about our, our, our live guest, Rick Perello. You know, yeah. we went about 25 minutes with Rick. We had some musical acts. Oh, the music was how, great. How about the music, right? The music is great. We had, so the, this all came from the Youngstown Mob group on Facebook. Uh, if you're not a member of the group, search the group. Youngstown Mob, join the group. People post pictures. They share stories, files, um, you know, anything they want to find out, family history, they want to find out, hey, my old neighbor was named uh, Jimmy Coconuts, and, you know, right. was he connected? Things like that. Those are fun. Right. Um, <clears throat> so we, there's a lot of stuff in that group that's fantastic. We really hope you join the group. But we had some people reach out to us. Uh, they said, hey, here, we have some artwork, you know, things like the Steel Valley Syndicate logos, or um, we've got some music, right? So Jay Bird, excellent musician, absolutely sent us uh, his, his brand new song that he wrote, called Steel Heart, S-T-E-E-L, Heart, two words, um, and his name is Jay Bird, J-A-Y-B-Y-R-D. <clears throat> Jay sent us this song, and it was fantastic. And we said, you know what, this is such a great song. It fits, it's, it's a written about traffic, and it's written about the mob. Yep. We said, you know, how would you like to play this song at our show? At the Robbins Theater. Yeah, and he did it. Yeah, man, he knocked it right out of the park. Jay was fantastic. He, he showed up. He brought a, a guitarist, uh, Bobby Ocean. Yeah. And together those guys rocked it out, man. It was That song is available right now on all music streaming platforms. Check it out. Thank you, Jay. That was a great performance. Also, we have a link to that, don't we, on our we, on, the, on the Youngstown we, Mob group? We do have a link yeah. in the group, so scroll yeah. through. You'll see it. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely worth, worth checking out. Also worth checking out, Nick Aducci. Our, our other musician for the night played two songs for us, yep. original songs that he had written uh, based on the mob history of Youngstown. There's, there was the Ballad of Lenny and Joey that he played for us at intermission, yep. and he closed our show with uh, Seat 17, also about Jim Trafficant. That song, if you don't know, guys, is the musical intro and outro to our, to our Youngstown Mob yep. Talk podcast. Nick has been gracious enough to let us use some of the music there for our intros and outros. So thank you, Nick Aducci. His music is is uh, also available on stream, music streaming platforms. His album is called United Music uh, 2, I believe. He has yeah. a new album out now. But United Music, United Music 2. Uh, check out Nick Aducci. Check out Jay Bird. Those guys are local musicians. Very cool. We thank you so much for coming to the to the show. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, you know, you got to support these local guys. You know, they, they work just as hard as we do and, you know, to bring you good stuff. So make sure you support them. We had uh, we had some some guests, some other guests as well as part of the the show at the Robbins. So we, we mentioned Rick Perello was there in person. Um, we had another guest there in person, although he was he was locked up in a steel drum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have to read about that one. We don't. Uh, really, yeah. Let's just say we found him in a junkyard in Camel. Yeah. But 
Other than that, we had two more guests that were pre-taped interviews. Yeah. You know, uh, we had Frankie Suzanne, um came on. This, he, told, he told some stories, guys. You're not going to want to miss if we post those clips. Frankie talked about when Joey was killed, Joey Naples was killed, yep. how Joey's crew, and Frankie was part of that crew, how Joey's crew got together and discussed retaliation against Lenny Strollo. Yeah. And whether or not they should kill Lenny Strollo. Yeah. And the discussion of why and why not was had, and that's that's in that uh, Absolutely. in Frankie's interview. So it's very, very big point. You know, Frankie also talked about Mark Bacho, um, controversial character. Right. You know, hitman. Um, very lovable very lovable though in in the Crooked City podcast. He came off he, he came he off really very did. friendly in the Crooked City podcast. I got to go to the prison and, and sit with him several times, talked with him a lot on the phone written back and forth with him, corresponded. He's, Mark's a complicated character. He is a, um, definitely in the room with him, and when you're when you're around him, very personable, funny, got a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's done some heinous things. Right. He's killed people. He's, he's shot people. Um, you know, he shot our, our former Mahoning County prosecutor, Paul Gaines. Yeah. Um, uh, for the mob. He was doing it for the for. The mob, essentially, Lenny Strollo and those guys. And they used him. And Frankie was a friend of Mark's. Yeah. And Frank, despite the first time these two guys ever met, if you don't know the history of this, Frankie Suzanne was like a burglar working his way up. Uh, they were at a bar one night. Frankie was talking to some girl. Well, that girl turned out to be, you know, Mark Bacho's girl. And Mark showed up and, and uh, they got into a fight. A few weeks later, they saw each other at another bar, or Mark saw Frankie yeah. at the bar. He went into the bathroom. Mark followed him in the bathroom, stabbed him over a dozen times in the face, the head, yeah. and, you know, almost killed him. Yeah. Almost killed, almost killed uh, Frankie. So, to for that kind of a war, Frankie was going to get revenge, and he was going to try to kill Mark, and it was like this whole big thing. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, just the way things work out, luck and happenstance and everything else, these guys end up becoming good friends. Yeah. And they become really good friends. And Mark uh, went off to prison for, for the things that he did. And Frankie joined us to in, with our, our, our interview portion. He wanted to talk about how Mark is a human being. Exactly. How Mark was his friend. Yeah. Mark was used by Bernie the Jew, Alt Schuler, and Lenny Strollo and those guys. More Bernie. Yeah. But how he was used by those guys, Jeffrey Riddle and those guys. Absolutely. How he was taken advantage of. And, you know, he wasn't making excuses for Mark, right? Because Mark did the things that he did, exactly, and he wanted to be part of the mafia, and that was why. Right. But you have to remember these are human beings, exactly. You always, with TV and movies, it oftentimes criminals get labeled as evil. Um, there's good guys and bad guys in movies right. or TV shows, um, and there's and you could say, yeah, that guy's a bad guy. He might be a bad guy, right? But these are human beings, and human beings are complex. Yeah. They're emotional, they're complex, they're still somebody's son, they're still somebody's daughter, they're still somebody's husband, exactly. father. Exactly. So we approach these things, you know, on a human level. We understand people do bad things. Right. Um, you know, there might be some evil people in the world. There might be some saints in the world. Most of us live in the middle somewhere, right? Right. So we're human beings. We make mistakes. Other people make mistakes. We're not making excuses for anybody or any of the violence or any of the carnage that's happened. We're historians. We explore this stuff. It happened. Why did it happen? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Right. The who, what, why, when, how kind of journalism yeah. standards. You know, we try to give them the background on yes. it and let them, you know, kind of form their own opinion. So, yeah, we, we do that. And right. so Frankie came on. Frankie wanted to talk about how Mark was his friend and his true feelings. And to hear that side of it from a guy who's connected in that world, yeah. you don't get those kind of things. You don't get those kind of no. those, those uh, more emotional kind of stuff. You don't get that from these guys. So yeah. I thought it was great. Um, and a lot of these connected guys, you know, whether they're made or not, right, a lot of them don't want to talk about that stuff. True. You know? They definitely don't want to go up on a stage. We've had, we ask, guys. Right. We, we are, you know, we're working on more things too, but it's always a, a difficult process to get a guy to commit right. to coming out and telling a story on stage. It's hard enough when it's just you and him. Or, you know, you turn on a camera or things like that. Those are difficult interviews to get. Absolutely. So, you know, we appreciate Frankie for doing that, for giving us the time. And, uh, of course, we had a big surprise guest Yeah. for, for the Robins. Our, our, Absolutely. Our big surprise guest. Who was it? The one, 
the only Youngstown's finest, Ed O'Neill. Yes. Al Bundy, Jay Pritchett, whatever you know him as. Right. Du- Dutch. Yeah. Whatever you guys know him as from the movies and, and everything, and TV. <laughs> the detective booty time. Oh, yeah. Booty from time. <laughs> across the U.S. From Ford, from Ford Fairlawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's, uh, he's been in so many movies, so many TV shows. Ed O'Neill was our was our guest. He's a good friend of mine. We brought him on. Um, you know, he was he couldn't make it to Youngstown. He was filming a TV show, a miniseries for FX about disgraced NBA owner yeah. Donald Sterling. Absolutely. Uh, Ed gets to play the lead role of the sleazebag Donald Sterling. Yeah. Um, he said, you know, those kind of roles are good. Actors always love to play the the villains in the in the project because those guys are always more fun. Right. They're either, you know, uh, they have the funny lines or they have they're just real despicable characters. And they get it kind of allows them to kind of, you know, Take that edge a little further. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and and play those characters that make you know because that's normally probably not them, right? Exactly. So they get and, to yeah. step out and be that mean, evil guy, and yeah. you know, and we it, get to boss people around a little bit. And in in Ed's case, that's absolutely true. He is not that guy. He is yeah. not Donald Sterling. Uh, man, no. he is going to be fantastic. That's coming out. You know, should be in a few months on FX. Uh, he said Lawrence Fishburne is in it. It's, it's going to be really good. Oh, I can't wait. Lawrence Fishburne played Doc Rivers. Yeah. In the L.A. Clippers scandal. So. Yeah. It's going to be real fun uh, to see that. But Ed was filming, and his actual, his last day of filming on the show was the night of our Robin show. Right. So we did an interview a couple days before uh, via, via you know, uh, like a Zoom chat kind of thing and a video interview. And we uh, we talked with him, and Ed talked with us for like an hour and a half. Yeah. He, we, he was awesome, man. We only had a two-hour show, you know, mapped out, so we, we had to cut it down to like 25 minutes. But... Ed was fantastic. He gave some great stories. He talked about growing up on the north side of Youngstown yep. in the 50s and the early 60s, how there was a bomb going off like every night. If you don't know, the 1950s in Youngstown was the decade of bombings. There was 80 unsolved bombings in Youngstown. Um, they got deadly at the end of the decade, and people started getting blown up in cars after that. So Ed, would, Ed was talking about riding his bike with his buddies around the north, the north side, waiting for an explosion to go off, right. and they heard a big one. They heard a loud one, and they went up to, uh, what was it, Madison and Elm, right around there? Yeah. And they found your great uncle. Your, your great uncle had been uh, blown up in a car bomb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so Ed was, I, I just can't get over it, man. Ed was awesome. You know, that that was that was gracious of him to, to come out and, uh, you know, and to meet us on Zoom and to talk to us and take time out of his busy schedule. Yeah. Uh, and then to give us... What he gave us. Um, oh, he got as he talked about. He shared some stuff that's never been shared before. Yeah. Okay. He shared a great story about uh, the guy who wrote the about the Untouchables filming. The, he wasn't in the Untouchables, but he he's good friends with the writer. The the I think he's a Pulitzer Prize winner, David Mamet. Yeah. Who wrote the Untouchables? He gives a great story about David Mamet and the yeah. uh, the Untouchables. Uh, he gives an even better, crazier stories about the Sopranos. Yeah. Ed O'Neill. They wanted Ed O'Neill to get to be in The Sopranos so bad, they offered him two different roles. Uh, the first role being the guy uh, who, who Tony kills in episode one. Yeah. Who he finds in witness protection. Yep. And 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 kills. They wanted Ed to play that. Ed was like, I don't. That's that's not the role for me. You know, Ed right. Ed wants a juicier role. You know, right, he wants something right. better. Well, then they came back to him maybe a season or two later with a real juicy role. They wanted Ed to play... Richie April. Richie April. Oh. Guys, if you remember Richie April, what a character. Uh, he gets, you know, spoiler alert, he gets whacked by the... He comes in, he gets out of prison. He's bitter guy. He wants yeah. he wants his due, what's due to him. He's a made guy. Uh, he clashes heads with Tony, and he gets whacked at the end of the season. So he has a great full season. Um, and he's just, you know, he has a love affair with Janice. Yeah. It's a great, great character, and Ed would have been amazing in this role. Absolutely. But Ed actually turned them down, and he'll explain why. He explained why to us, and uh, just a phenomenal interview. I, I just keep going back to it and thinking, man, if Ed was gonna, if Ed was in The Sopranos, he's already the king of television. I don't know if you know, Ed right. has Ed has been in more episodes of television shows than any other actor. He, I think he passed Lucille Ball. He did. He did pass Lucille Ball. So he did, you know, over ten seasons of Married with Children, and ten seasons of uh, over ten seasons of Modern Family. If he was in The Sopranos, I mean, he's already Hall of Fame in Mount Rushmore. Right. He, I, he, he'd be the, he is the king of TV. So he's, he didn't even need The Sopranos. He, that's how successful Ed was with his career. Just think about that mob associates, Youngstown's own. 
Ed O'Neill. Exactly. And, you know, we also talked about more Youngstown mob stuff. Ed's uncle was a judge yeah. and was a lawyer, was president of Youngstown City Council, uh, Joe O'Neill. And he was also Joey Naples' lawyer. Yeah. He was very close with Joey. Yep. Um, they, you know, they had good, they had good friendship. My dad used to go over to their house with uh, my grandfather and uh, Judge O'Neill would have cookouts. Yeah. And they'd, you know, my dad and them would go over and they lived right around the corner on Gypsy Lane. And they, you know, they'd have these, they'd have these picnics and the kids would hang out and they'd also go do their business. Yeah. That's, you it's, know. it's just, everybody's connected to everything. You know, it's in this town, everybody's one degree away from something or there's, you know, direct connections right. or anything. So, and then Paul Gaines, when he got sworn in, he was sworn in by Judge O'Neill. Was he really? Yeah, I believe so. I didn't yeah. know that. I think if you look at that video when they show him getting sworn in in the courthouse. Wow. There you it's go. Judge O'Neill. I'm always so. learning stuff every day too, guys. I've been yeah. researching this for 20 years and every day I learned something pretty much new. So there's so much there. It was a great show. We thank our sponsors. You know, um, the spot we had sponsors for the show, but our show here, we've got sponsors. We've got Cut and Toast Cigars yep. out in Struthers. Check them out, guys. Premium cigars. They're great to us. We always do some stuff down at Cut and Toast and Struthers. Um, we've also got Sunrise Inn yep. of Warren. Sunrise is fantastic. Um, you know, they helped. They gave coupons to the live show, the Robbins Theater. Yeah. Um, they Ken Hyderis and those guys, they're amazing. The, it's, a, it's a great restaurant in Warren. It's got a lot of mob history itself. You know, we'll dive into that a whole a whole episode one day. Um, you know, we've also got more sponsors for the show. Yeah, we got Pro Team Auto Sales. We want to thank them for sponsoring us. Uh, Jeff and the guys down there have always been very good to us, so we want to thank them as well. Um, thank you guys, everybody who came out and sponsored, you know, yeah. our event. Yeah, it was just a fantastic show. It yes. really was, you know. Uh, and, and listen, we've heard feedback from everybody. Now, we understand this too. 1,400 people. In that theater. Yeah. We actually learned that there was a lot of people in that theater who'd never seen us before. Yeah. Who'd never seen this show, Youngstown Mob Talk. So, I was, you know, it's interesting that they came out to a Youngstown Mob Talk show, but they didn't realize that Youngstown Mob Talk was a, was a show. Right. That we do, you know, these weekly YouTube chats that we hit in certain points. We we keep it fun. We keep it light. We move on. We, we kind of move at a fast pace. Right. So we understand that there's a lot of folks maybe who don't have the historical base the knowledge of, you know, of, of the gangsters and who was what and where they controlled and all that. So because you guys might be at different levels of, of knowledge, we're doing a few things. We're working on a few things for you guys right now. Um, we're going to work on a lecture series where Jim and I will go, go, go around to different parts of town and give lectures, real just two-hour mob talk history lessons. Yeah. yeah. Okay, say we go to Warren again, we'll talk about – the history of the mob there in Warren, how it played, <clears throat> how it played with, in connection with Youngstown. We'll talk about all those things, the nitty gritty right. we'll stuff. We'll talk to him about some of those, some of those Warren characters, guys like you know, yes, Charlie Murphy, Jimmy Muncine. Yes, exactly. Chippy, Chippy Mango. Great stuff you know. to talk about there. Yeah. So we'll really dive into the history, the KKK and Niles, the, right. how the Italians and the Catholics boosted out, you know, bumped out the KKK and Niles. Um, you know, all kinds of different parts of Trumbull County, Mahoning County. We're going to go around on a lecture tour series just doing the history. So we heard you guys. We heard some feedback. Some people wanted more history. We've got a lot of videos and a lot of content on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash amazing podcast company. Um, we've got hours and hours of content. So find it. The Vice Squad pod. We do the Vice Squad podcast. That's all general history. It's not a discussion. It's you'll see pictures and Im images. Um, Vince Guerreri narrates that. Rick Perello is a writer on that. We're producers and writers. That is out there for you guys. Lots of history. But again, we will be planning some live uh, lecture series coming up. Absolutely. And that's just strictly, it's not really a discussion. It's strictly for history lessons, right? So if people are just interested and we'll give, tell you which books to buy to get more history. We'll dive into all that good stuff. Um, that's coming up soon. You know, we also have, uh, we did a 50-50 raffle. Right. At the event, and you know, we raffled off Jim Trafficking paintings. First of all, if you got any Jim Trafficking paintings, post a picture. Post a picture with your, of, of you and your painting. Put them in the group. Tell people you won at the group. It's uh, we're so happy to give those away. Those were original signed Jim Trafficking paintings with signatures on the back. They were cataloged by, I believe, the prison where he where he did them. Right. Um, so those are those are great. We're so happy you guys got to go home with prizes. Um, you know, we also raised money in this 50-50. We gave. Uh, the charity money to 
uh, scope of Warren. Yep. Scope is a senior citizens service organization. Right. They do, um, you know, they got like four thousand members, senior citizens. They do a lot of uh, events for their for their their members. Right. They do a newsletter for everybody. They do a lot of good stuff, keeping our seniors active and in a good community. Right. And you know we really support that. And uh, we know there's members of Scope that that might have been on our show the other night. So we thank you for coming out. Absolutely. And we definitely plan on working with you guys in the future. So um, you know that that'll be something we were very happy to. I was I was just introduced to this charity um, the other day, actually right before the the event. And it was fantastic. We're so happy we're able to keep, keep that money in Warren uh, on the night of the Warren show that we did. Absolutely. And, uh, again, big, you know, shout out to Scope. We do definitely hope to work with you guys in the future. Uh, merchandise. Everybody that bought merchandise that night, if you bought a T-shirt, make sure you take a picture of yourself wearing the, wearing the shirt, post it in the group so you can get in that contest. Yeah. I mean, they're going to they're gonna win a hoodie. They're going to win a $20 uh, gift card to Tavern 26 on 12th Street and Camel. Yeah. They have fantastic food. If you haven't eaten there yet, I haven't. We, we're going to have to go there one day because I got some wedding soup from there. Oh, mon ami. <laughs> as, as Jimmy Molitor yeah. would say. Uh, fantastic food. Cool. So, okay. Uh, and they got something for everyone. You know, maybe if you're not into the, you know, looking for the Italian cuisine, they have chili dog night. Cool. Everybody loves chili dogs. Nice. Know? That's in Camel? Yeah, that's a Camel on 12th Ta Street. Tavern 26? Tavern 26, yeah. Cool. Good. So, so. Uh, we got to thank them for, you know, donating some uh, some contest stuff, and we appreciate nice. it. Nice. Nice. Well, you know, we're, we're definitely planning a lot of stuff. We also, one thing we skipped here, when we talked about the, the, the event, the Robins, yeah. guys, we got to debut uh, a demo version of something big, big we've been working on. Um, you guys have asked for... Shirts, you've asked for um, history lessons, you've asked for all kinds of stuff. We're listening to your feedback. You guys asked for mob tours. We heard it in the group early on. How about a mob tour? You guys, can you put something together? Can you work on something? Yes. The answer is yes. I, we can. We finally have, have unveiled and debuted yep. and said, you know what? We've been working on an amazing app for you um, that you can download on your phone. It's not available yet. It should be available uh, within the next month. So we'll keep you posted on this, but you'll be able to download it in your phone. Yep. You'll be able to go. It's called Youngstown Mob Tours. You'll be able to see mob spots. Um, there's every every place, you know, from bombings to shootings to mob hangouts to mobster homes. You'll be able to click on these things. It'll give you a description, a picture of where it was or if it's still around. Uh, and also the very cool option here is at the bottom of the page, you'll be able to click map it. You will be able to drive yourself to these locations, okay? We're working on like a guided tour system and everything, but for right now, at the very least, you'll be able to click on that and find these spots in real life and go there and take your own Youngstown mob tour. So that app is going to be great. It's got, uh, it'll have all, all the info, information for Jimmy and I doing these events. Yep. You'll be able to get tickets or get you know maps to where we're going, breakdown of what we're talking about. They'll have links to our Facebook group, this mob group. Join the group. There's links to our YouTube channel so you can watch all our historical videos. Um, you know, there's a lot in this mob group, this mob tour app. You'll be able to find all our content, everything we do. You'll be able to find right through that app. Get links to it right through that app. So when that app comes out, we really hope you guys support it and uh, check it out and share it and tell everybody about it because, you know, mob tours, are, are they're great. You can take your own tour. Say you're like, oh, well, I don't really have time to, to go to uh, the west side of Youngstown or, you know, I'm kind of in the south side to this afternoon. I'd like to swing by and see if there's any spots in the south side. Okay, check it out. Take your own, you know, go, yep. to, go to three spots you want to ch check out. Um, there's like, there's going to be, you know, 100 different locations on there. Right. So it is, it is really a packed app and it's very well done, guys. It's a group called the Alteris Group. Um, they've been putting it together for us, so it's fantastic. Cannot wait for you yeah. to get this app. And I mean, you know, people that are from here, maybe they have people coming in from out of town. Exactly. Take them on a mob tour. Take them on a mob tour. Teach them the history of Youngstown. Yeah. You know. Exactly. So, so we're, we're excited. Oh, man, I'm pumped. I can't wait. Tons of good stuff coming your way. We got more live shows we're going to put together. Um, we, we accept your feedback. We take your feedback. We rolled through some punches. You know, we got everything we did. We, we try to get everything out for you guys. Um, again, if somebody... 
if you're if you're if you're friends with somebody who is planning on going to one of our shows or has heard about us or something, please you know check out that business article, the business journal article. Absolutely. Had a, had a great had a great piece on us and um, on the show what the show was, but also. Have them watch our videos. Yeah. Share our videos. Check out our YouTube page. I, I mean, that's the easiest way for you to see all this content that we've we've put out there for you guys so that you can, you know, get the history. And then this way, it might it might percolate a question in your brain so when you come to the show, you can ask us. Yeah. You know? Because sometimes, you know, people hear information and then something clicks. Well, I heard this. I remember this, this, and this. Yeah. Let me ask him this. Exactly. You know, it happens. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many people I ran into the show, you know, that, you know, knew my grandfather. Yeah. There's still some of them guys around, you know. Yeah. Uh, I had one gentleman come over and was talking about when they used to run the living room and he was naming off all these bars. And, you know, I mean, the guy got to tears, right? Yeah. And my dad actually came over and took a, took a photo with me and this gentleman. And this guy was literally crying. That's great. You know, and, and so it was, it was real heartfelt for me, yeah. you know, to hear people talk about those guys because there's not many of them left. Yeah. And so when I do get a chance to talk to those people, um, it, you know, it holds a special place in my heart. Yeah. Because it, it kind of brings them back to me in a way that, uh, you know, doesn't when you're just reading an FBI file or something like that. Yeah. And listen, we want to say this right now. This is very sincere. Okay. 100% sincere. We really do hope that every person who comes out to a show or watches our videos or anything is entertained, is, gets what they want out of it, right? Gets um, the historical information or entertainment or whatever they're watching it for. We really hope and sincerely do try to give you guys everything you want. So we take feedback. We take other things. Send us messages. Um, you know, please don't just troll it out there and try to skew people's opinions, whatever. Just send us a message. Send us your feedback. We're very cordial. We reply. Absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're, we're taking notes, too, and things that people want to see. And people, like I said, every time somebody wants something, we try to get it to them. So send it to us. Um, again, for anybody who just wants the mob history, you just want mob history and, and that stuff, we're working on a lecture series just for you guys. Yep. Um, if you want more of the, the live variety show kind of thing, we might have another one of those coming up soon. Right. Um, we'll try to, you know, be real clear on what's going to be in the rundown of the show. Somebody had a great suggestion. Yeah. Somebody said... Uh, think about maybe printing out a program for people. Right. We, you know, this is our first live show. I, we didn't think about putting out a program. Right. That's a great idea. So whoever sent that that idea, love that idea. We're going to work on that. That's a right. th that'll give you a breakdown of what what's going to be discussed or what's go what you're going to be watching or anything like that. That's a fantastic idea. Right. So we appreciate that stuff. Right. You know, and and like like we said at the top, you know, this was our first big show, yeah. right? Sold so, it. so we're going to learn from it. Yeah. Right. And and to sell it out, guys. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. so much to sell that show out. We didn't have huge name value. No. We didn't have some giant mobster, you right, know. Right. We didn't uh, uh, We didn't have, on our advertising, we didn't have all that stuff to advertise. We didn't have, you know, we just had the Youngstown mob talking. People came out and they showed up. Yeah. And they showed support. So we thank you guys. We're eternally grateful. Absolutely. And we're going to get better. We're going to, you know, we're going to have more, more events, more shows, more content. Everything's coming your way. We love you guys. We truly appreciate you. You're the mob associates that keep us going. You know, you guys are the ones are, are that this is a community. I don't want to say you're fans because we're fans of you. Right. We're fans of everybody. People that post in that group, that share stories, we're all a big community. So we love it, and uh, we cannot thank you enough. And, and one more time, you know, we also want to thank our sponsors, Cut and Toast, um, Cigars Out in Struthers. We're going to be doing a live show. Uh, it's a smaller, more intimate thing. You know, come out to those. Those are free. Um, they're they're very small kind of chats, and and uh, we have a good time. We smoke cigars. It's called Youngstown Mob Talk with Cigars. Yep. February twenty seventh, we're gonna we're gonna be at uh, Cut and Toast on Lowellville Road in Struthers, Ohio. And Sunrise Inn, we love you. We love the pizza, the burgers, the food. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So Sunrise Inn, we want we'd like to do a show from Sunrise. Yeah. That'd be so nice. keep an eye out for that. Um, Sunrise Inn is fantastic. They're really good to us. Pro Team Auto Sales. Also fantastic, good to us. You know, I mentioned during the show that I, I recently hit a Youngstown pothole, of course. Now my shocks are gone on my car, right? Yeah. So I got to go. I'm, I'm, Jeff, I might be calling you guys down at Pro Team Auto Sales soon. I got the, you know, I need a new, new ride. So Pro Team Auto Sales, they're really good people, man. They actually do treat you like family, so check them out. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we really thank everybody else. So 
That's all I got today, Jimmy. My voice is almost gone. What a great show that was. I know. Now we need a couple days to recover. Yeah, so. Thank you, everybody. We love you. This has been another edition of Youngstown Mob Talk. We'll see you next time. That was an amazing podcast from an amazing podcast company. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like and subscribe buttons and share it with your friends. It goes a long way in helping us produce more amazing content.